What's up everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going to go over what is an impulse. So a linear impulse is what we're going to be dealing with. Let me write that out here. This is something that we get when we have a force acting on a body for a certain duration of time. So normally we see it denoted with a capital I. Some people use a different letter, but that's what I'm going to be using. Ultimately, it's equal to the integral of F dt, um, but often we'll be seeing it written as simply as f times delta t. This assumes a, a very common case where we have a constant force, but like I said, it is just the product of force multiplied by the time that the force acts. So basically, if you have an impulse on a body, it's going to change the momentum in a body, but uh, we can find the term uh, for impulse, this f delta t showing up if we rearrange Newton's second law. So let's write that here first. We have sum of forces is equal to ma, Newton's second law, also referred to as the equation of motion. Um, I'm just going to rearrange it a little bit. We're going to keep the left-hand side the same for now. And on the right-hand side, we're going to rewrite acceleration as dv dt. Um, now what we want to do is we want to multiply both sides by dt. So we have sum of forces dt is equal to m dv. And just like the last video, we integrate both sides. We have the sum of forces dt is equal to the integral of m dv. And we're taking the definite integrals here, so this is going to be from t1 to t2, and v1, oh, that looks like a w, v1 to v2. Um, it is important to mention that v1 is equal to velocity at t1, and v2 is equal to velocity at t2. Um, we really should actually be writing this uh, sigma sign on the outside of the integral as well. And if the force is constant throughout the integration, then we can actually bring it outside the integral as well. So we have the sum of forces times the integral from t1 to t2 dt. And on the right-hand side, if mass is constant as well, which it is for many problems in impulse and momentum, uh, referring to impacts and collisions, um, we'll bring that out as well. So we have the mass on the outside of the integral from v1 to v2 dv. So these become very simple integrations. On the left-hand side, we just get the sum of forces times t2 minus t1. And on the right-hand side, we get mass times v2 minus v1. So we can rewrite t2 minus t1 as just delta t. It's the change in time, equal to mass times the change in velocity. Or what I like to do is I distribute the m across. So we have m v2 minus m v1. And really what we've written here is the left-hand side. This is impulse, or impulses because of the sigma sign, if there's more than one, is equal to the change in momentum. So actually, I'll just specify that's the sum of our impulses is equal to the change in momentum of our system. So when a force acts on a body for duration delta t, it causes an impulse down here. It causes an impulse that will change the momentum of a body by the amount equal to the impulse. Um, it's important to mention that impulses have the units. I'm going to write this out here of newtons times seconds, right? It's force times time. Um, but that's also, you can rewrite that as kilogram meter per second squared times seconds. And if you cancel out one of the seconds on the bottom with the top, this is equal to kilogram meters per second, which is in the last video what I said the units are for momentum. So impulse and momentum have the same units. But yeah, that's a quick introduction to what a linear impulse is. And again, it's just impulse is change in momentum. Drill that into your head and I will see you in the next video.